What's up, everyone? We are live at 5. It is Monday, January 14th. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And a fantastic talent here today in, in a bright color. Brighten up your day. Miss Eden Espinoza Yay. is here. Woo. She just started rehearsals for the Falsettos National Tour. Oh, she's going to be great. It's like our favorite show. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I told Eden I know every word of, of her role as Trina. I'm not going to volunteer. I'm not going to show that off, that skill. <laughs> um, and uh, she also has an album coming out and a concert. There's a lot to talk about. So anyway, uh, we'll get to her. But first, today's top five. And we have another play joining the season. This is exciting, and this is a show that has been rolling along off-Broadway, keeps on extending, moved. We're talking about what the Constitution means to me by Heidi Schreck. So this is going to the Broadway. It will go to the Helen Hayes Theater. I'm I thought like, it was just the Hayes. I, I like to honor Helen. Honor her. There aren't that many theaters named after women. Anyway, um, and there aren't that many female playwrights, by the way, and Heidi Schreck has joined the season as one of them. Uh, <laughs> OB winner Oliver Butler directs the production. It begins March 14th, opens on March 31st, thus making it Tony eligible. Well, whenever anything, whenever they announce anything like closer to, it's like, oh my God, it's going to shake up the Tony race. Shake it up. It also says for limited engagement through June 9th. We'll see about that. We'll see about That's that. That's like Tony. You never night, know. Right? You never know. Isn't June 9th like the day of the Tony? It's, it's very close if it's not the actual day. Uh, what the Constitution means to me follows 15 year old Shrek. I'm losing my voice if you're if you're 15 year old? She's not 15 now, but oh. she was 15. Mm -hmm. This tells the story of when she was 15 and she put herself through college by giving speeches about the US Constitution. Did you put yourself through college in that way? I did not. So this is timely, I assume. It's timely yes. and it's interesting and it's political. And she will be joined by Mike Iveson and New York City high school students, uh, Rosalie Cyprian and Thursday Williams. Oh. Pretty cool. Yeah. Tony eligible. <laughs> sure. All of them. <laughs> And I feel pretty good about this news. Wow. We are so excited about this we one. didn't see this coming. Whoa, whoa, no, we didn't. Whoa. So, we've talked about this before. Steven Spielberg is making a new movie of West Side Story. This is actually happening, people. Mm -hmm. uh, we already knew Ansel Elgar is yeah. Tony. Yay. Now we found out that Broadway's Ariana DeBose, Broadway.com blogger Ariana DeBose, Two who just blogger. closed in summer, right. um, is playing Anita. So that's uh, you don't have to say it like that. But right. I mean, you can. Oh, I. <laughs> Eden liked it. Eden liked is, it. It's fine. This is Keep big it news. Keep it that, by the way, Anita is a role that Eden Espinosa knows well, among many roles. She, yeah. She's done that role. Um, and this is this is very exciting. And you know, Ariana Bose, it's very exciting because she was like an ensemble member on Broadway, yes. and, then we, and then she got a break in Bron in Hamilton. She was the bullet, and then she, and then a Bronx Tale. You know, she's been she's been rising the ranks. So this is very exciting. Congratulations. Ariana, uh, David Alvarez, also exciting. One of the original little boys who played Billy Elliot. And won a Tony. Won the Tony Award is playing uh, Bernardo. Mm -hmm. These are both roles that uh, won, the, uh, the, in the original film, they won Oscars. I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, also, you remember when they did that, we announced here, I'm sure like a year ago, when they were doing like an online, you could submit your audition. Well, Rachel Zegler, New Jersey High Schooler Rachel Zegler was like, well, I'm gonna do that. And now she's, now she's Maria. <laughs> She's, she's cast young, as Maria. Right? I love your reactions to all this. So exciting. <laughs> it's it's exciting. exciting. It is exciting. It's so exciting. She's like 17. And also, like uh, Josh people. Andre Rivera is Chino. I love Chino. Anyway, they're going to film this in the summer. Um, I liked, mm -hmm. I'm picturing, by the way, I'm picturing like a, a certain street in New York City where like West Side Story is filming over there and In the Heights is filming over there. Oh. I think that'd be Let's like really, it. I want to see, and then they could do like a dance offer. Anyway, <laughs> just the gym. Anyway, this is very rumble. exciting. Yeah. We can't wait. And by the way, West Side Story is also coming back to Broadway later this year in a crazy new production that we don't know. Ivo Van Hova. Maybe he'll just do a very traditional production. We don't know. But uh, West Side Story for everyone. Eat it up. And this excited, exciting, immersive play is heading to the West Coast. Uh, we're talking about the jungle. Yes. which was just at St. Anne's Warehouse. Uh, might still be there, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to San Francisco's Curran Theater. This is an immersive play charting the refugee experience, also very timely. Uh, Stephen Daldry and Justin Martin directed the production. It's set to run from March 26th through May 19th. And yeah, it was in London. It's been in New York. It's yeah. just, And I feel like it might come back to New York. You never know. Um, so that Are casting, you trying to build Broadway buzz for the jungle? I don't think I need to do that. I think it's just okay, there, and I'm pointing thing. to it. Yeah. Um, so casting will be announced soon, but California is getting a chance to see it. 
By the way, Beth and I went to London last week, and we saw The Inheritance, directed by Stephen Daldry, and it blew my mind. It's like my favorite new show that's Two not here Two plays, an epic. Yeah, yeah, anyway, among other things. But among I just thought things. there was a connection there. Yes. And congratulations are in order for this playwright. This award is mm. so fancy sounding. The Monte Cristo Award. It just mm. sounds very like international. You get a cape in a <laughs> but it's actually the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center mm. up in Connecticut, yeah. just being yeah. really super classy. We love it. Um, they give out this award, and this year John Logan is getting it. John Logan is, of course, uh, the Tony and Drama League winner for Red, the play Red. Mm -hmm. And now he writes musicals. So he uh, did Moulin Rouge, and now he has a new musical called Superhero, starting at Second Stage, uh, which he did with Tom Kitt, which we're very excited about. Uh, and so they're honoring him on April 22nd at the Edison Ballroom. The Monte Cristo Award is for a prominent artist who's had an extraordinary impact on American theater. Your like words. Espinoza. Those are your words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the color mm. of the rainbow is heading to an unexpected stage. This is the wackiest news story of the day. <gasps> I love it wasn't this so the Monte much. Cristo Award. It's the Skittles musical. I love this. Yeah. It's a musical. The candy? Yeah. The candy. Okay. Okay. Just to clarify, the candy. <laughs> Everyone's making this. Yeah, I would thought the M&M's characters would make it first but go ahead <gasps> no uh <laughs> this will appear during the super bowl oh. will eno who brought us the realistic <laughs> joneses <laughs> okay and tom Payne and lots of other things is highbrow. writing it it's highbrow 30 minute musical 17 member cast including many many broadway names what I'm do you mean during the super bowl what does that mean it's gonna be like live it's gonna be a live musical during the super during bowl the yes. like commercials instead of halftime no, not instead no, of. Maroon it's a first ever. It's a commercial. Okay, whatever. I'll read the story. It's a commercial ahead. that's against commercialism. I hear. I think. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, lots of Broadway names which are not listed here, so I won't try and remember them all. But lot like a, like you'll look at the list and you'll say, "Wow, I know these people." Okay. And uh, colorful and tasty. Okay. <laughs> Uh, thank that's you, Beth. <laughs> Why don't you go look up those names? I'm going to go look that go up. Go be amazed once again. Be amazed. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us about today's guest? Gladly. So we have Eden Espinosa with us here in the studio. Like we said, she's about to be t traveling across the country as Trina and the national tour mm -hmm. of Falsettos. She's also releasing her album Revelation very soon, and she'll be, be performing at the Sony Hall on January 28th. That's coming right up. She's known for her turns in Broadway's Wicked, Rent, and Brooklyn. Her screen credits include voiceover work in Tangled, the series, Elena of Avalor, Titan Maximum, and more. Be sure to follow her on social media at Eden Espinosa and leave all of your questions in the comments below. Please welcome Eden and Paul. Hello. Yay. Yay. You, must, you, must, you must know that's your color. It's, is it? Yeah, you look fantastic. Thanks. I love it. Thank you. I love a splash of color. I know. <laughs> Sensible pop. Yeah. Lip match. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's uh, so what have you been doing today? What, what happened today? Today was first day of rehearsal for Falsetto's national tour. Wow. Super excited I for know. this. Me too. Did, I'm assuming you saw the revival on Broadway? I did. Yeah. I did indeed. Did you cry? I did. I wept. It's, em it's emotional. It's a lot. It's and a I, lot. And I laughed and I, and I cheered. It and makes you feel all the things. It's all the things. Yes. Trina um, is... I, I have to, you know, I do a lot of interviews with people, and yeah. I feel like Trina comes up a lot as a dream role for people. I've heard a lot of actresses say, mm -hmm. I'm dying to play Trina. I want to play mm -hmm. Trina in falsettos. Was this a role you'd thought about before? I have to be honest in saying I was not totally familiar with falsettos before I saw the show. Okay. I didn't go to college, so <clears throat> I didn't, like, have, you know, teachers assigning me stuff. And so mm. there are certain musicals that were more obscure. You weren't that, breaking down or holding to the ground While I was, like, school. 17 years old, 18 years old. No, I wasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, my first... My, I mean, I'd heard of the musical, of course, but yeah. my first time really like diving in was when I saw it. So, Trina wasn't really on my radar, although I was told that I, I might be a good one. Hmm. Just people did tell me that, but I never really. So people brought it up to you. Yes. that happens a lot when you're um, an amazing actress with a great voice. People come up to you and say, "You know what you should play, right?" That happens. Sure. Yeah. It sure. was. It was when I was younger, before I was a great actress, maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. But you, it, I guess there's like an Elphaba connection now, too, because Stephanie J. Block, of course, yes. got a Tony nomination doing this role in this production on Broadway. So amazing. Yeah. Like, huge shoes to fill. Although I can't fill them because my feet are my own and I have to wear my own <laughs> shoes. Exactly, exactly. Um, I love when I think about <clears throat> um, great actresses in the community. Now that Wicked has been running so long, there are so many Elphabas, mm -hmm. former Elphabas, 
And they're all like really amazing. It is really a great sort of like yes. starting thing for people. And yeah. it really does careers get built yeah. out of We call it the, um, the Green Girl Sisterhood. Yes. Because it is kind of a thing where once you, you don't really know <clears throat> what it entails and how taxing it is and all the secret little things until you've done it. So once people are finally like, oh, I get what you were saying, uh -huh. you know? So yeah. yeah. Who's the mother of the Green Girl Sisterhood? I, I feel like I Julia Murney. I want to say Murray. Julia Murney. Okay, okay, yes. we agree. <laughs> I feel like yes. Julia Murney is kind of yeah. like the mother She's alphabet. She's mama, for She can sure. sit down any alphabet and go, this is the Here's this how the truth. it is. <laughs> Let me tell you. She just had a birthday, by the way. Happy birthday, Love Julia her. Murney. Love um, her. So this is exciting. So Falsettos. exciting. And you have an amazing cast. Yeah. So who's your husband? My husband is Max von Essen. Fantastic. Who's your husband's lover? <laughs> Nick Adams. Yeah. Uh, who's the therapist? Nick Blameyer. Okay, this is just this Nick is like, A and Nick B. Yeah, this is like a, a really fun I know. group of people. And you've done tour. You did Wicked, Wicked on the Road. Did I did you? one stop. You just did LA, an, California? I did San Francisco okay. stop of the first national tour. Okay. So I didn't actually, so I've never traveled. So this with is a new tour. thing? Very new. Are you nervous about traveling? I am a little bit, but it's more, it's more on the spectrum of excited. But, okay. you know, I, th I think, like, as you get older, you get set in your ways and you start to go, like, is, how is this going to work for me? Right. Like, the traveling. But we're fortunate that it's, like, a small enough tour. Uh -huh. It's, like, eight cities, but, like, two of them are a month long. Yeah. So it's not a crazy bunch of one-weekers, you know? So. But it's not small like you're driving each other around in a van. No. No, it's not that. It's a no. real. It's, I'm kidding. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's a real, it's a real, a real it's, tour. It's a real thing. <laughs> so how much stuff do you bring? How much, how much stuff are you allowed to bring? Are you getting those little like suitcase organizer pods? I do and, use those. Yeah, you do. I'm sure you do. I do. I feel like you're a probably fan. a good packer. I'm a fan of them. I'm a, <laughs> I am an overpacker always. Okay. But, you know, we get our little trunk. We get a trunk. You get a trunk? Yes. Oh, the show gives you a trunk? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so I'm planning to keep in there like stuff I keep in my dressing room or stuff from my hotel room okay. or like extra shoes. What kind of like personal coat. things do you want to have in like every dressing room? Do you want to like put on the table? Um, I am a big... I am a big candle person. Oh, okay. I'm also a big diffuser slash humidifier. Uh, uh, Essential yeah, so oils aromatherapy. and steam mm -hmm. and that. humidify the air. Got it. So those kind of things are, I have to have them. Right. Mm -hmm. And this tour is launching in Arkansas? Yes. Did I read that right? You did That's read amazing. It right. Yeah. And Just hitting the South right from the start. You know what's crazy is everyone is saying Fayetteville, Arkansas. They're like, you're going to love it. It's the cutest city ever. There's so much to do. Like, out of oh. all the cities, they're like, oh, yeah. And we're there oh, the cool. least amount of time. We only do like two shows there uh -huh. before we head to Dallas. But uh -huh. I'm excited. So, is this a hard show to learn? It's a lot of, yeah. um, it's a lot. Like, yeah. you're on stage kind of, you have your moments, your solo moments, whole nother ground breaking down, whole nother ground breaking down, and, and other moments. Yeah. Um, but but it's a lot. It's a lot. It's Vocal, a lot. Bill Finn, William Finn, wrote a fantastic score. Yeah, and it's great. We started learning music today, and um, you know I've been listening to the cast album. But when you sit down like with the music in front of you and start breaking it breaking it down, she's breaking it down. No, um, <laughs> then you're like, wow, this is really complicated and intricate, and so your brain starts to hurt after a while. But it's a good a good hurt. Uh huh. Yeah, it's challenging, but it's a good challenge. I known you for a long time now. I first met you when you were, uh, I think when you were the Wicked Stand, you were the first off of a standby for Adina, mm -hmm. for Adina Menzel. Have mm -hmm. you heard of her, Adina Menzel? Never heard of her. Um, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that was exciting. Yeah. I remember when you went on and I remember then Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. This is Brooklyn right here. Brooklyn is a lot trendier now than it was when Brooklyn the Musical Isn't that was crazy? Here. Yeah, now it's like a It was ahead fun. of its time, I think, because yeah. now people are like, oh, Brooklyn. I'm like, First of all, you weren't even born. Yeah. Um, yeah. Second, how do you know this musical? And you love well, it so much. Well, there's an amazing much. live like, album, which people should, yeah. should listen to. Yeah. Um, but uh, what was your favorite costume in Brooklyn? Oh, that that last, that trash bag dress, the I Love New York deli bag dress. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, what, so what's different about Eden now and that girl back then that I first met? Talk about the journey of Eden Espinoza. Well. When, like when you look back on, because uh, you had a real like sort of breakout moment when you were really young. Mm, yeah. Uh, so what's it like when you look back on, on that time? Oh, I mean, I look back on that time with fondness. I mean, yeah. and, and a lot of humility and, and with the grateful heart. Um, you know, I think it was a weird time. It was right, right around the time when social media was yes. around and YouTube was just starting and just like starting. chat rooms were just starting. And so I think that... A lot of people know who I am that wouldn't if that wasn't mm. a thing, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but uh, 
Oh, I look back at that that girl and just go like, oh, she was she was sweet. Yeah, she was sweet. Yeah, you know? she was sweet. But um, the difference now, I think I just I'm obviously older. Uh huh. <clears throat> we don't want to talk about that <laughs> very much, but um. I think I, I don't know what the difference is. What is the difference? I'm more, I mean, I'm more, I think I'm more comfortable in my skin. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I care less about, uh, what people think, Mm -hmm. which is always nice. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) and, um, I think that, you know, your career is long and there's moments of high moments Mm -hmm. and there's low moments. And I think that, um, I take every op- I don't take any opportunity for granted, mm-hmm. and I really like appreciate everything that comes because, who knows when the next one will come around? You know. You have really been on a roll recently. You've been in a lot of shows. You've been yeah. You've been doing a it's, lot of really yeah. good work. Like it's kind of like one after the next. Yeah, and a lot of them have been out of town, yeah. but they've been like amazing, amazing opportunities. You did Merrily up in Boston. You yeah. did Lempica yes. at Williamstown. Yes. You did, I saw you in the Heights in Washington, D.C. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, you, you've you really been sort of, it yeah. feels like um, you you have a newfound um, energy for yeah. this. Is that, is that fair to say? I, I feel like that is very fair to say. Yeah. yeah. I took a, there was a, there was a dry spell and uh-huh. I, I took a moment and just like tried to reevaluate and reassess my love for what this is and I I you know like I said before I didn't go to college so I just was flailing a little bit and I wanted to hone my skill set so I I did the two-year program at the William Esper studio and Mm. studied the Meisner technique and um and I came back just different wow yeah so so there was just kind of like you were like well I'm gonna actually go and like learn and and sort of challenge myself yeah yeah and it worked it yeah well yeah yeah. I'm glad it did work. Yeah, yeah. yeah that skill set is important. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you also you make music as well. Yes. And so Revelation. Revelation is a new album that's gonna drop any day. Who We're, knows you're not when. gonna know. At you know when point, you're gonna know? You're gonna know when you know. You're gonna know when you know. I'm gonna be Beyonce of musical theater. She's going to lemonade it. And it's going to happen when it's going to happen. Okay. But everyone should follow you on all the social media places so yes, they know. Yes. The single's what, out. It's yeah. going to be out very soon. So okay. keep keep posted. Keep okay. tuned in. Okay. Because it's happening soon. So on January 28th, uh, you'll be at Sony Hall, which is the hot new... Yeah. It's, it's such a cool room. It's a really cool venue. Yeah, I'm it's excited. Under the Paramount Hotel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and you, what are you doing? You're doing. It's my album release. Yes. My album release concert is on the 28th. And this is original music. All original music. My first album of original tunes, and I'm so excited. What's it like? Um, it's like it's really moody, but it's on the rock side of things. I mm-hmm. had like my first album had a song on it, Stone Cold Sober, that people really mm-hmm. responded well to, and so. Um, yeah, I say that like if Jeff Buckley, Adele, and Dido made a record, this might be my record. Wow, because yeah. they never did. Unfortunately. I know, but, but you I, did now. I, I did. Wow, and okay, I, no. You know, it's like it's heavy guitars, but there's like some quiet, sincere ballad moments, but there's uh-huh. some track elements in there. It's very vibey, Paul. Oh, I meant to vibey, mm-hmm. and you could sing. I mean, like you, you a big, big voiced girl. <laughs> But like when you make an album, sometimes you don't, you know, it's different than. Sure. Right? There's some I mean, big moments. There's some. You want there's all some sorts of there's some moments. moments okay. But there's also some intimate moments. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm excited to share this music and to see see what people think. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's been a it's been a journey writing this album, but it's been cool. great. Yeah. So people can go to SonyHall.com, I believe, or yes. EdenSpinoza.com, which is really pretty. Thank so many you. pretty pictures of Thank, you. You know, she's trying to get it all in a line. She photographs well. <laughs> she's trying to streamline the content, honey. Yes. Yes, I noticed. <laughs> I noticed your brand. I'm into Thank it. Thank you. I'm, so, into I'm it. so glad. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's a thing. It's good. I think like when you're not a millennial, you're like, oh, I got to You got to get it. it together. Yeah, you actually have to like sit down and go, how am I going to do and this? And when you do, it pays off. Yes. I'm Yeah. You learn something from the millennials. <laughs> you do. <laughs> And you teach them what Brooklyn is. <laughs> um, hey, Caitlin. Mm. Speaking of millennials. Hey. Hey, Caitlin. <laughs> That's uh, me. Um, <laughs> what are the people online saying? Of course. Well, John wants to know, how have you been able to balance doing voice acting, regular 
theater acting and writing your own music and doing a concert? How, how, are, you how are you doing it How are you able to balance everything? How are you doing it all? And keeping up with your DVR. Yes, that's the most important thing. Um, well, I think it's just, you know, uh, if I have a voiceover session, that's maybe twice a month. Mm. So it doesn't take up that much time. A session, usually it lasts anywhere from one hour to two to three hours, depending on how many episodes I have to do. Um, and theater acting, like that comes in chunks. Like, you mm -hmm. know, you, might, you rehearse for a show, you put up a show, and then you don't do anything for a while. So I was writing this album when I had breaks. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's partially the reason why it's taken so long to get it out um, and made, because I fortunately kept getting work over the last few years. So, um, but yeah, I think it's just all about focusing your energy on one thing at a time and mm -hmm. trying to keep, not to get overwhelmed with things, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Scott actually wants to know how long has Revelation been in the process and how does it feel to finally have it ready to be out? Uh, uh, it feels so good. I'm so ready for it to be out like yesterday. Um, <laughs> uh, the process has been hard because at first I was going to, I've always wanted to write music and at first the plan was to do an album like my first album, which mm -hmm. was musical theater songs yeah. and reorchestrated, taken out of context. And then, um, I, I found this producer that I wanted to work with and he's not from the theater community at all and not familiar with it at all. And he's like, well, why don't you, do you want to write music or do you write music? And I was, I said, I've always wanted to, but I'm really afraid. Mm. And He's like, why don't you just give it a try and let's see what happens. And so that was like a year and a half ago. So the album was written, you know, and, and made over the last like year and a half in chunks that I could get to L.A. and do it. So, so then what do you do? You sit down, you think like, well, what am I passionate about or which stories? How well, do you I had a lot. I would write a mm -hmm. lot, just like stream of conscious writing or, mm -hmm. you know, almost in a form of a poem. So I had a lot of content already. Okay. Um, but I, I really, I've personally had like a rough couple of years. So there was a lot in there for me to get out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so I collaborated with a bunch of friends and amazing artists that I, that I admire and felt safe with. And so they just kind of like guided me and mm -hmm. pulled it out of me. And um, so yeah, it was, a, it was a very cathartic, joyful process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Well, about five people have just written Limpika exclamation point. Oh my God. So, I'm so happy could people you, are talking about Limpika. So could you touch on that experience and what it's been like to hear an audience reaction about it? Yeah. Well, Limpika um, has been on my radar for a while just because um, the composer Matt Gould is a very good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, I've seen several readings of it. Um, and like oddly enough, I always just felt in my heart like I want to get my hands on this role. Like mm -hmm. I just fell in love with the music and and the essence of Tamara and um, and as fate would have it, here we are. And yeah, we went to Williamstown over the summer and we You're just still involved. Yes, okay. still involved. They well, haven't. Did you do like a workshop recently? Yeah, we just did a lab okay. of, of a lab. Act One. The chemicals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am not a lab rat. Hashtag. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, yeah, we just worked on Act One, so they're they're making a lot of changes and it's a big musical. It's a big musical. It's yeah. a big one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's special, and we have Rachel Chavkin directing, mm -hmm. and um, so yeah, fingers crossed. Like they have their sights set on bringing it to New York, and mm -hmm. hopefully that's going to happen soon. Cool. cool. Yeah. Let me do one last question. Okay. Shannon wants to know, what are you most excited about to learn from Trina and for oh. people to experience falsettos all over the country? That's an awesome question. Um, this is a, honestly a very different role for me. Um, and so I am, I'm equally as excited and scared to learn uh, who she is and how I interpret her. Um, it's my first time mom role, mm -hmm. which is fun and exciting. But yeah, I think she's, there's so many layers to her that are so human and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think that I'm just, I'm just looking forward to collaborating with, with the cast and James and to find my version of, of Trina. But what was the question again? What, what do you, you want to learn from her? What do I want to learn? Yeah. Oh, here's the thing. I think that she, you know, is at, is at times really like vulnerable, but man, the woman, she has put up with a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Marvin 
isn't the most likable, easy person to, to be around. And But I, I love how she looks at the situation and because she does love all of these people, um, makes tries to make the best of it mm -hmm. and really tries to do what's best for everybody even though it's super painful at times mm -hmm. and trying not to judge even though, oh my God, this can't be happening to me. Right. <laughs> um, and that's it's incredibly big yeah. of a human being to try to even attempt that. So mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm looking forward to learning from her. <laughs> so for anyone who doesn't know, Trina's husband leaves her for a man. That's the setup. And she can yeah, yeah. Go, go see, see falsettos. It. Yes. <laughs> it's one of my favorite musicals. I'm so jealous you even get to live in that music mm -hmm. every night. Ugh, it's, because yeah. it, it is very special. And you Stunning. get to be funny. You, yeah. I, you know, that's one thing. I feel like you were very funny in The Heights. Thank uh, you. Danielle, you had a lot of campy <laughs> moments. I love live for those moments. It's and, fun. And I love seeing, you know, I didn't necessarily see that from young Aiden, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. you get a chance to do sort of all the all the things. Yeah, now. I'm excited. Yeah, cool. I'm looking forward I'm to it. I'm excited for you. Thank you. I'm glad you're on a roll. Me too. Keep rolling. That's right. Roll all the way across the country in the national tour of falsettos. Yeah. And hey, look for a revelation. It's going to yes. drop. It's going to drop. Shh, look for it. Whenever she presses the button, it's like a big button on you. Yep. <laughs> Dropped it. It's drop day. Uh, and then uh, January 28th at Sony Hall. So go check that out, too. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for Great having to me. See you. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day. If you liked this, you can find us in a podcast version by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Teal Wicks of The Share Show.